Hi, everyone. My name is Jeremy Fretz, and I'm the Assistant Vice President for Experience and Education at NCARB. I'm here with my colleague, uh, Brittany Cosby, who is manager of uh, many of our programs, but particularly our foreign uh, facing programs. So as we're going to talk today about uh, some of the questions for li the licensure candidates raised uh, about the foreign paths to licensure, whether you're educated in a country outside the United States or have a, um, a foreign license. Um, we have some questions that we've received from audiences uh, over past presentations, and we want to just go through and answer those for you. So Brittany, uh, hello, and thanks for being here. <laughs> As always, um, she's really the expert. Uh, so our first question is on the area of foreign architect. I have a Bachelor of Science, a BS in architecture from another country. Is there any way that can be considered uh, uh, here in the US? Yes, so if you have an architecture degree that has led to a license outside of the United States or Canada, you can pursue the foreign architect path to certification. So the answer is yes. As long as you have an architecture degree that has led to your license, this is a potential path for you. Okay, uh, next question. I am an older architect who got licensed in another country. I still want to pursue a US license. Is there a quick-ish way to do that? Yeah, so I guess the foreign architect path could be considered the quickest way um, because it does allow you to become eligible to take the ARE without having to go back to school to obtain a professional NAB degree or without having to um, pursue an ESA, Education Evaluation Services for Architect. So if you have um, a license outside of the United States or Canada, and that, and, um, as well as the architecture degree that has led to that license, you could pursue the foreign architect path, which would then make you eligible to begin taking the ARE without having, again, without having to go back to school to obtain that five-year degree or without having to um, obtain an ESA. It looks like we have another question. Can you please explain the difference between the regular path and the international license path? Is there any difference between hours, exams, and general requirements? So I'll try and be specific when we when you're when the person asking the question is saying international license path, I'm going to assume that they're talking about what we call the foreign architect path. And those are the keywords that you'd be searching for if you were looking on our website. Um, just to, and just to sort of cover a point there, there is not an international architecture license. And in fact, there's not a national architecture license within the United States. They vary by individual states or territories. So the difference between our uh, the standard path that we talk about or the path that uh, domestic candidates would have access to, the difference for foreign architect uh, is really about how you meet the education component. So it's either the the uh, the foreign license or your foreign education or your combination of education and license in another country are going to substitute for that education piece in the path to licensure here in the United States. So after that, you still have the same requirements for the architect registration exam uh, and for the uh, the AXP pr program. So uh, the experience and exam requirements are the same. So foreign architect specifically. Uh, is for people with a foreign uh, license, a license to practice architecture outside the United States, and it combines that foreign degree plus an accepted foreign license to meet the education requirement. All right, and it looks like we have another question, Jeremy. As a foreign architect, how many years do I need to work here to be eligible for the ARE? So there's not a year specific requirement per se. If you have a foreign license and are pursuing that foreign architect path, you're eligible to begin testing. So you can begin taking the architect registration exam once you're approved for the foreign architect path. So once you submit your initial paperwork and ask for that path and we approve you for that, um, then you're eligible to begin testing. 
Now to receive your NCARB certificate and then be eligible for licensure in one of the 55 jurisdictions in the United States, you also have to complete the AXP just like any, uh, any candidate domestically. Um, Brittany, here's one I know we uh, get lots of questions about uh, related to, we hear lots of questions about translation. So do we have a preferred list of approved translators? We do not have a preferred list of uh, translators or translation services. Um, NCARB's requirement is that the translator be a certified translator. Um, also, please be mindful um, when requesting translations that for the foreign architect path, NCARB only requires your academic transcript. So the translation service should only be um, translating your academic transcript. We do not require course descriptions for the foreign architect path, and we do not require or accept evaluation reports or equivalency reports. There are some translation services that will offer all of those services in one. Please just be mindful, especially since the actual price points may change if you get additional services. NCARP only requires the translated transcript. And so a transcript is likely to be only a matter of a handful of pages, right? Uh, is really what we need, that list of courses and the grades and what degree they received. Yes, you're um, exactly what Jeremy just said. The courses you have taken, the grades, um, the degree title, and the uh, degree completion date is typically what a academic transcript uh, will include. So another transcript question, what if uh, your country of origin or your university will not forward transcripts directly to NCARB? Um, if the university will not forward the transcript directly to NCARB, you can ask your university to send the transcript directly to you in a sealed university envelope, and you can um, send the sealed university transcript to NCARB or if the transcript needs to be translated, you can send that still university envelope to a translation service. Um, again, if that transcript is coming directly from the university, um, you would wanna make sure it is in a sealed envelope, um, but not be able to accept a transcript that was sent um, to you from the university electronically. Um, it would have to be an official sealed document. Right. So. The whole idea is that the candidate hasn't, hasn't had a chance to even touch that document inside that envelope before it gets to us. Um, all right, we have an example uh, someone giving, giving us. Uh, I live in Texas. I'm licensed in Mexico. What options do I have without doing ESA? We haven't even really talked about ESA yet, so you might even want to tell us what ESA is. Yeah, so... Um... ESA is the, the Education Evaluation Services for Architects. It is um, an evaluation that can be completed for architects who, oh, I'm sorry, for um, foreign educated applicants who have a degree outside of the US. The um, evaluation is uh, conducted against NCARB's education standard. So your degree will be evaluated against NCARB's education standard in any education deficiencies that are identified in that um, ESA evaluation would need to be remedied by uh, taking additional coursework. This is not always um, a feasible option for applicants because it does require the applicant to take additional coursework if there are education deficiencies. And typically there will be education deficiencies identified in the ESA report. So for applicants who are actually, um, for foreign educated applicants who also hold a license outside of the US or Canada, you um, may have the option to pursue the foreign architect path to certification, which would require official academic transcript and um, uh, your, your license, your architecture license um, from outside of the US or Canada. Uh, for this particular applicant, if you hold a license in, in Mexico, we have had applicants who um, are licensed in Mexico and have become eligible for this path. So this is um, a potential path for you with the license in uh, Mexico. So it's either 
Again, we get, we get hear this question a lot. People get confused between the two paths. If you're doing the foreign architect path, if you're eligible for the foreign architect path, you don't need to do the ESA, right? That is correct. Um, ESA, the ESA is an option. You do not have to complete ESA in the foreign architect path. Um, if you are eligible for the foreign architect path, we encourage applicants to pursue the foreign architect path unless you are personally licensed or in a jurisdiction that actually requires ESA, but you do not have to do both. All right, so a question for you, Jeremy, what about, candid what about candidates on the foreign architect path? Is there a way to complete the AXP with the AXP portfolio? So the portfolio is specifically designed for those who can't use the hourly reporting method. So the, the short answer is no um, because to this question, but it's because the candidates that are on the foreign architect path, once you've been approved to pursue the foreign architect path, you're eligible to use hourly reporting and the time limited requirement is waived. And this only applies to people who are foreign architects. So that those time limits that we normally have where you receive half credit for older experiences and no credit for experience older than five years, those do not apply if you've been approved for the foreign architect path. So there would be no reason for anyone to, in, uh, in the foreign ar architect path to proceed with AXP portfolio because their experience does not expire. All right, and we have another experience related question. I have four years under a licensed architect and six years working for government as a municipality architect. What would be the best way to use this experience and how should I do that? My experience is older than five years. Okay. So the first question that I would ask this person is, is this experience under a US licensed architect? That first four years that were mentioned, if those are under a US architect, then theoretically that's long enough that you may have gained enough experience to complete AXP. Now it depends on if you've gathered, gained that experience in the right experience areas, you've completed all of those tasks that are described in the AXP guidelines. But theoretically four years is enough time if you're working under a US licensed architect, that alone um, could qualify, uh, could help you complete uh, AXP. And again, we're coming back to this question of the time. And is my, the question was, is my, is my, what if my experience is older than five years? And for foreign architects, there, that time limit does not apply. Your experience can be from longer ago than that. And then uh, one other piece of this question, this is a multifaceted puzzle. Um, one other piece of this question was asking about being a, a municipality architect. Uh, so if, if you're working in local government in some, some capacity, you might not be you know, in the practice of architecture, you might not be working under a licensed architect. So you need to look at setting O and see what, those, what other experiences uh, areas that work might qualify for, but it's likely not going to qualify under setting A. Uh, because you're not practicing architecture and you might not, you know, may not be working for a licensed architect. Yes, so I am licensed in a foreign country. Do I need to pass the, the exam? Um, in general, the answer is yes. Uh, both the foreign architect path and the foreign education path would require you to pass the exam. Now, there is an exception if you happen to be pursuing licensure through one of the mutual recognition agreements that we have with Mexico, Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. That's a very specific use case. So for most people that might be asking this question, the answer is yes, you need to take the ARE. Uh, Brittany, question for you. When things are sent, uh, sent to NCARB from independent organizations, how do I, the candidate, know that NCARB received the information? You will receive um, a status update from NCARB via email. So you would have um, an update in writing letting you know what we have received and if any additional information is needed. So watch your email, your NCARB associated email for that, right? how that will come. Brittany, for the foreign architect path, does the verification form, that's what we would call the CVF, the credential verification form, does that need to be filled out only at the beginning of the process? 
Currently, the credential verification form is required at the beginning of the process to determine eligibility, as well as at the end of the process to confirm that um, you, the applicant and architect, is still licensed to practice um, outside of the United States or Canada with no disciplinary action. Um, so we actually require the credential verification form again at the beginning of the process to um, confirm eligibility. At the beginning of the process, we do need to confirm that you have a license that is active and in good standing with no disciplinary action. At the end of the process, we do need to confirm that you either have a license that is active or a license that is eligible um, for reinstatement with no disciplinary action. All right, so I think we have another experience question. If I decide to go through the foreign architect path, am I still bound to do half of the hours in experience setting A in an architecture firm under the supervision of an American architect? Or can I supply experience hours done under an architect from my home country? So the number of hours required under setting A does not change because of the foreign architect path. So you would still have to get that minimum uh, 1,860 hours, 1,860 hours of experience working under a US or Canadian licensed architect. Uh, Brittany, question for you. I am on the foreign path to foreign architect path to certification. I have my transcripts and my license, but my university is not being supportive of providing the transcripts to a translator, to a professional translator. And uh, I do not want to be held, or they don't want to be held accountable for translations to English. Do I have other options? Would it be possible that NCARB has someone do the translation? What else can I do? I think we touched on this a bit earlier. Um, so if your university is unable to send your transcript to a translation service, you can request an official sealed copy of your transcript uh, from your university to be sent directly to you. And you can forward the transcript in a sealed envelope to a translation service. Now, when there is a third party involved, when we have a transcript that is being sent um, to inquire from a third party, we do require confirmation from that third party. So in the event that your transcript needs to be translated, um, the translation service would need to provide a translation statement or a translator statement as well describing how they received your transcript. So they would need to let us know whether they received the transcript directly from the university or if they received the uh, transcript directly from the client. And if it was received directly from the client, we would wanna know how was it received, hopefully in that still university envelope. So again, if the university um, is unable to provide the transcript directly to a translation service, um, just request the transcript to be sent directly to you in that sealed envelope and have that um, and send that um, sealed envelope, the sealed transcript directly to a translation service. And the translation service should send the original document that they received in the sealed university envelope, as well as the translation and as well as their translator statement indicating or describing how they received the documents. And we have additional instructions for that, right? We have, uh, where, would, where would candidates find the instructions for all that translation, uh, you know, that handing off and, and where are those instructions published? We do have a foreign architect uh, documentation checklist on our website. Um, we also provide that link when you indicate interest in the foreign architect path. So there is um, an automated email that is sent with the checklist as well. So you can check out that checklist and it has a, an outline of how documents should be sent to us and who we will accept documents from. So documentation checklist is your keyword if you're looking for it on the website. Great. Um, so what happens after a candidate submits all of their forms to NCARB? What happens next? After we have all of your um, documents, we ask applicants to allow at least 60 business days for all of the documents to be um, reviewed. 
And within that time frame, NCARB may be in contact with your university, we may be in contact with your credentialing authority or, um, or the translation service for more um, information if needed. Um, let's see, another question. If you begin your licensure process, if a candidate begins their licensure process through the foreign architect path and then decides to take, uh, to move into a NAB accredited degree program, uh, will the process, how will the process change? If you decide that you are no longer pursuing the foreign architect path, contact us, contact NCARB so that we can uh, remove your interest in the foreign architect path. And then uh, we'll be able to let you know next step based on your jurisdiction um, requirements. Um, you will still need to complete the ARE as well as complete um, the AXP. But when working directly with the jurisdiction, um, you may have additional uh, requirements as well. So when you switch from the foreign architect path to a more standard path, you would need to follow the jurisdiction's um, requirements and procedures for uh, licensure. So there might be a uh, like a, uh, a local uh, state test they have to take, just explain, make sure they know the local regulations, they have to have the state turn their eligibility on for the exams, that sort of thing. As a foreign licensed architect with broad experience, do I still have to sit for all ARES? So each yes. is the ARES. Uh, the answer is yes. So again, the foreign, foreign educated and foreign uh, architect paths really just supplant substitute for that education piece. You still have to complete the experience piece and the examination piece, unless you're on one of those mutual recognition paths uh, uh, which, you know, in this case, for this person saying they have broad experience, they might be interested or eligible for the uh, mutual recognition agreement. All right, for the foreign license architect path, does the foreign architect, does the foreign license status need to be active in order to be eligible? So we touched on this a little bit earlier, but I'll come back to it again. It does need to be active at the point you apply for the to the path. Now, if you're in a country where, um, you know, there are some countries where actually once you, they find out that you've moved out of the country, you, you're automatically made inactive in that, in that country. And so NCARB recognizes that, but if you have to be uh, eligible to be, have your license reactivated. So if, for example, that country uh, would just have you move back and you have to establish residency or you have to uh, pay a, a renewal fee, those things are acceptable uh, if, you know, later, you know, in that second, second time we verify your credentials. What NCARB is really looking for is to verify that you've not practiced illegally or had any disciplinary action uh, before you get your first, before you get your NCARB certificate. Uh, so the answer is that you have to be active uh, in the foreign, the foreign license has to be active at the point you apply and has to remain in good standing uh, until you've, um, until you've gotten your NCARB certificate. For you, Brittany, what is the difference between an architect license and the NCARB certificate? Can I, as a foreign architect, try to get a license without going through the NCARB process? Yes, as a foreign architect, you can pursue licensure um, without going through um, the foreign architect path or without obtaining the certificate first. So for the, so, an NCARB certificate is a credential that leads to reciprocal registration or reciprocal license. So through the foreign architect path, you are made eligible to begin taking the ARE through NCARB. And after completing the requirements under the foreign architect path, you would be issued an NCARB certificate that you can then use to apply for a license in any US jurisdiction that will accept an NCARB certificate issued through the foreign architect path. So essentially this certificate could lead to licensure in multiple jurisdictions, as long as the jurisdictions accept an NCARB certificate. An architect license is an individual license that is issued by the jurisdiction 
So if you would like to obtain a license directly through the jurisdiction without going through NCARB's certification process first, you could contact the jurisdiction and determine uh, the jurisdiction's uh, licensure requirements and work directly with the jurisdiction to um, become eligible for um, the examination. For example, some jurisdictions may actually require the NAB accredited degree. Other jurisdictions may require ESA, the Education Evaluation Services for Architects. Some jurisdictions may not, may not have an education requirement in order to um, become eligible to take the ARE. So just be mindful if you are if you would like to uh, pursue a license without going through NCARB certification process, you would need to uh, be aware of the jurisdiction's requirements, meet the jurisdiction's requirements in order to begin taking the ARE, um, and then you can receive your license and pursue certification at a future date. If you would like to pursue the foreign architect path, you would work directly with NCAR to become eligible for the exam. And you become eligible for the exam through the foreign architect path by again, meeting the, um, the requirements, having um, a degree that has led to a license to practice to legally and lawfully practice architecture outside of the United States or Canada. Okay, so in summary, there are sort of local options but the NCARB certificate path gives you uh, sort of a universal option that gets you well prepared for whatever jurisdiction you want to go to. Yeah. Okay, does uh, foreign architect experience, so with an experience question, does foreign architect experience expire if it is older than five years? Well, first, um, once experience is reported and approved, it does not expire. And that's true for any um, licensure candidate. If you are pursuing the foreign architect path, you are not limited by the reporting requirements. So any previous experience can count toward the AXP as long as it's in accordance with our AXP guidelines. Brittany, that's all the questions that we have for, uh, for this video. So if we did not get to your questions or if you have other questions for NCARB, feel free to reach out to us if your questions are related to the Foreign Architect Path. Feel free to reach out to us at foreignarchitect at ncarb.org or you um, can contact our customer relations department.